um, to make sure everything's running smoothly for you guys. Yeah, I hope, uh, you know, there were, we realized that there were some technical difficulties and things like that in the uh, last game, or in the last series that we did yesterday. Uh, part of that may have come from us being at IGN in a relatively unfamiliar environment or something like that. Um, but we hope it's all cleared up. We hope everything looks great and spick and span for everyone. Yeah, you guys, you guys need to tell everyone that this is happening. By the way, if if you haven't already told everyone that there's an extremely unique and awesome two v two tournament being played right now that has the addition of each team's Skype audio as available streams, thanks to the genius at warprism.com, uh, then you need to tell everyone, Twitter, Facebook, anyone you know that watches StarCraft Two or plays StarCraft Two or enjoys it in any capacity, they should be watching this right now because. You never know if this is ever even going to happen again. This is like a once in a, a year so far <laughs> um, <laughs> since the game's been released. This is the first time I've seen anything like this. Yep, absolutely. And it looks like we're having a little bit of difficulty getting select here. So uh, as soon as he jumps into the room, we're going to be ready to go in just a second. There we go. There's the invite for select. Looks like there's a little bit of drama. Select doesn't want to join Tarsonis Assault, which is going to be the next map. Uh, he keeps constantly declining. Oh, finally, he's in the lobby, at least. We'll see what he has to say. All right, and it looks like they did change colors on me. We'll see if Select goes back to purple or not here in just a second. Select is asking if this is a best of three or best of five. Indeed, there was our question answered. It is a best of three. And I'm going to go ahead and change Select's color. He'll probably change back on me. And I'll just be frustrated and confused, but that's okay. Indeed. So it looks like Team Subsuns is going to take a moment to just confer now that they realize the map choice that is, or the map rotation actually that's in now. It's Tarsonis Assault, and um, they want to figure out exactly what they're going to do to try and stay alive because they are one game away from being knocked into the lower bracket. You don't want that to happen ever. So they're just taking their time trying to figure out what they're going to do. It looks like both of the assassins are ready to go. And Select said he needed just one second, so he'll be back here in a minute. And uh, thanks to everyone who decided to organize this tournament. This has been a fun and unique opportunity to cast for this. We'll even briefly bring up our um, thank you screen. So big thanks to Complexity Steak, uh, formerly Style Life. You can find him at complexitygaming.com. He was instrumental in putting this up. I didn't give a shout-out to Alan yesterday for putting this tournament together. Was... Uh, very, very instrumental in organizing the whole tournament, so big shout-out to him. Jake Frank from WarpPrism.com. Uh, Josh Prodigy Fallen from uh, IC Cup. You can find a lot of his maps all over the place. He created maps specifically for this tournament. Find his stuff at Twitter.com slash ProdigySC. Akaya for putting together AlphaCaster. You can find his stuff at bit.ly slash AlphaCaster. The countdown has begun, guys, so we're going to jump right into the game. Yep, game two in a best of three series between Sub Suns, comprised of Optic Zero and Select, versus Assassins, Complexity Druby and Complexity Cats, very well renowned and well respected two v two teams, both of both teams actually. And the map is Tarsonis Assault. It is one of those Blizzard maps that's been around forever and ever, I believe, all the way back to the beta. But right now we've got Cats as the yellow Zerg up in the top right, or actually the very top middle of the map. He is that yellow Zerg there. His teammate is going to be Complexity Druby, Blue Terran. Hopping over to the other side, we have Dignitas Select as the Red Terran, and lastly, FXO Optic Zero playing from South Korea right now as the Pink Protoss. Absolutely, and they did manage to switch colors on me, so give me one second, guys, and we'll get that figured out. But uh, Druby is indeed now blue, and Katz is yellow. So there we go. Everything good to go. Um, now, I'm, I'm kind of curious to see if we see a rush build or something along those lines from Optic Zero and Select. Uh, it seems like they were upset by the early game rush and the way that Druby and Katz played the last game. Possibly even a little bit of drama developing there with Select maybe not wanting to jump back into the room. So we'll see if they pull out something a little bit cheesy here. I'm wondering what the message at the end of the last game was from Optic Zero. It says, do you want to rush early or something like that? And I don't know if he was just talking to Select or talking to Katz and Druby. I, I don't think that that's anything out of the ordinary that Ling and Marine uh, breaking down the destructible rock in the early game on right. high orbit. Nothing that shouldn't be familiar with. So Optic Zero, I believe it was just a slip up trying to talk to Select. So we'll see uh, after goofing up a little bit if they're still going to try and do a big rush or, or not. There's a gateway and a barracks coming up for Sub Suns, respectively. And it looks like uh, Katz, does he even have spawning? Yeah. There, there it he is. is. Yep, but uh, pretty conventional speed link timing here. So we'll see if he tries for that super, super early uh, Zergling speed. 
Now, Subsuns is going into a pretty defensive posture. They're, they're walling off both of their ramps. Looks like Select is trying to get in there and do some damage to this SEV. Select going to go right back to building this barracks, unfortunately taking damage on the next SEV as well. Katz, of course, renowned for his annoying, annoying drones at the beginning of the game. Sometimes in 1v1s, even pulling off four drones at a time to do harassment. Uh, oh, wow! Manages to get himself an SEV kill, so Hero Drone is going to walk his way out of the base, a victor in life. I was still kind of hoping Katz would um, pretend to leave and then end up building a hatchery inside of Select's base, but <laughs> I guess we're not that lucky for this game, at least. Maybe I'll talk to him between rounds and see if I can get him to do it later on, but uh, <laughs> we have a second... Actually, no, it's a factory going up for Druby, not a yeah. second barracks, so he is teching up pretty quickly here off of just that one gas. There's already a reactor uh, coming for the barracks, which, of course, makes me think... Uh, certainly that Hellions will be mm -hmm. swapping over onto that reactor and being cranked out. It looks like uh, if we go to Optic Zero's wall, is it complete already? It's... I think if he plugs a Zealot there, he should be okay. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, it, it's just an extended version of that wall we frequently see in 1v1. Um, but it looks like it's pretty easy to attack. I mean, it would take a while for units to be able to reinforce from this side. Uh, so any sort of an early rush, early speedlings, plus these early Hellions, is actually going to be pretty devastating to this wall. Looks like that's actually going to be defended with a Stalker. Kind of clever. So Stalker coming down now for Optic Zero. I'm curious to see what tech he's saving up for. He is on double gas. Is he going to a sentry? He is. Is. Yes. So this is going to be some sort of a gateway push here. And there we go. Cat's already immediately expanding to the gold. I like it. And, of course, that's also a sign that they're going to be the aggressors once again. He's already got his circling in position. Obviously, you don't want to take the gold if you're still pinned inside your base. But these first two Hellions and little set of wings just about to get their wings. There they go. Scampering on towards Optic Zero's base again. They're targeting the player from... Uh, playing from South Korea, his latency is a little bit lower. Trying to gain vision there so the Hellions can at least attack the Stalker. Stalker is a great unit here for up zero to have, though, as it takes a lot of fights and a lot of flames to actually kill off. And Katz and Ruby uh, lose a Hellion and not much else. Optic Zero didn't lose anything there. Oh, he actually did lose one sentry. Oh, so. oh yeah, okay. yeah, he did lose one sentry. Um, but yeah, it was kind of weird because the sentry I thought was too far away to get attacked by the Hellions. The Hellions must have shot just as the sentry was moving away so that was in range and I thought the Hellion was too far away to get killed by the Stalker but uh, <laughs> everything just kind of surprising me. Depth That's perception. All right. <laughs> and here we have second gas coming up now for Drooby. He is going over to Banshees. No cloak. Did not have a second gas. Will not have that 200 gas available to him. Select on the other hand has made a pretty decent wall. He's only got one little weak point here and that is the supply depot over on the left hand side. He'd be able to plug that in pretty quick with a bunker if he wants but he is, is going to Cloak Banshee. Yeah, he's getting Cloak Banshee before even building a Banshee, so it looks like Derby and Select both have the same idea, except uh, one's got Cloak and one's got a Viking coming out instead. And that first Banshee for Derby should be done. I'm not sure where it actually... No, wait, what did he do? Well, let's see did, here. Did it finish? There's there it the is. Banshee. All right, already here. And there are no turrets and no marines in the area, although Select does have a few of them in a bunker right at this wall, so here they come. Uh, responding as quickly as we can. And the Banshee is going to rack up a quick five kills. He's just backed out of there. No, he's not going to be able to shoot. So uh, he did snag a lot of worker kills. Obviously, that's going to put him up in the Harvester count. But Optic Zero getting a Stargate now. And he's got a pretty healthy economy. He's actually got the most Harvesters of anyone, Mr. Optic Zero, with that Chrono Boost. Yep, but uh, Katz is working off of that gold right now as well. So we True. take a look at the economy tab. We do see, once again, uh, these Essence have a pretty good lead in economy. I mean, it's... That's that's pretty healthy lead, actually, with the way Katz is mining off of that gold. And he has played a very good macro game so far. And he has enough lings and roaches out to do significant damage or receive damage. So a uh, good example of knowing your opponent, knowing that they were once again going to go for some sort of a turtle macro-oriented play. Select does have another Banshee coming out. Ooh, did he actually... This one thing is coming out? I'm not sure. Uh, may have gotten caught in transit here. I'm actually checking Vikings to see if they have any kills on him or anything like that. Because he does have another Banshee coming up, so he's obviously not that afraid of still using them. I have no idea. Hmm. So, <laughs> Jerby didn't have, like, any Marines or turrets in his base, so I actually don't know if none of those Vikings had kills. But uh, the male Ursadak just asserting his dominance, <laughs> just <laughs> saying, don't, you better not kill me. <laughs> or there will be a bunch of other Ursadaks at your wall, but... Um, anyway, uh, Select, yeah, he does have a Banshee out now. It's actually going to Optic Zero's base. 
Yes. So maybe, yeah, he's just gonna head up to Cats. Oh, that might be actually still there. No, that's how big Zero is. The Air Force picking up some gold mining drones and killing those guys off. Yeah, very, very good harassment there. Uh, Evolution Chamber is coming up, but does Cats have layer? He does, so he can put down uh, a couple of different options for Pokemon if you wanted to, and indeed we do see a sport color, but don't forget that is going to come into a couple of uh, drones, and now the Phoenix is getting in. They are going to be able to pick off a couple of those units. Oh, and the Banshee does go down, but at the loss of four or five drones, and then there's a couple that were invested in the sport crawlers, and in addition to that, lost a couple of Vikings as well to these units. Here pops out, obviously, the has been dealt with, but it looks like another one is actually heading up to the middle of the map. Uh, taking on some wings and roaches, there's no entire here in this area, and Druby uh, is not making any Vikings anymore. Uh, oh, sorry, he is making Vikings. They sort of swapped there on the production tab from the last game, but... Um, yeah, Drooby is making anti-air, obviously, to deal with these political banshees. Cats just has to retreat this roaches and doesn't have enough to actually attack full on uh, for any sort of counterattack either. So right now, Select and Optic Hero just sort of running the table right now, killing off all these overlords, any sort of anti-air needs to be picked up, and uh, they're just having a fun time here. Five kills on this banshee headed up now to Cat's main. He does have two sport crawlers and a queen there to be able to defend against this. We'll see how effective that's going to be. Yeah, but Cat's now down to just 26 workers, and that has allowed uh, Subsun to retake the advantage in terms of workers overall. Queen almost goes down, that's going to allow the Banshee to sit back and just pick off a couple of rooms at will. Now up to seven kills altogether. Another Banshee making its way in at the moment, and Select is going to have to watch out, but he does get an Investor kill, and that is pretty big at this point. He's going to need to back off that Banshee here in just a second. Doesn't, he actually doesn't get the... Uh, kill either, and this other Banshee may have been cleaned up as well, but not before it did significant damage. So with this air harassment, Subsun's doing quite well. They have expanded as well, and uh, yeah, there we are. So both teams kind of on equal footing at the moment. Is there a fleet peeking up somewhere yet? <laughs> no, that's <laughs> I, true. I don't want to sneak one in without being no it's noticing. It's Stargate, but no fleet peeking. Yeah, okay, he's actually going to need a second base, I guess, before he gets a fleet peeking up. But uh, Pathogen Glance and Fester is all on the way now. Whoa, a little bit of a lag spike. Or maybe not. I'm not sure what that was. <laughs> maybe the Phoenix is stopping oh, the Phoenix there for is a second. Just I stopped to... dead, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> And it looks like we may have a little engagement in the middle. Does Assassins feel comfortable enough engaging this? No, it doesn't look like they do. They're going to fall back for the moment. Uh, Select and Optic Zero, though, with this nice air cover, with these Phoenixes that are going to be, be able to pick, pick up whatever units they want, it's going to put them in a pretty good spot. They also have a nice position here on the high ground. Drooby's forced to use a bunch of scans. Oh, a couple of fungals go down, and that plus these... Uh, Vikings is going to be able to take out all of these Phoenixes. Nice job to do to destroy that air cover. And the tables kind of have turned here for the positioning war. And it looks like uh, Subsons may have to back up. I'm not sure what Druby was doing with those Vikings. He's probably going to score two more Phoenixes. He just flew off to the left side like, while they were fungled and totally prone. It's kind of interesting. But uh, either way, these things on high ground are going to be very difficult to deal with. Druby doesn't have the Phoenixes, obviously, to be able to lift them up and take them out. Um, yeah, I don't know if Cats is going to be able to do it. Using Sport Crawlers is being a simulator there and being forced to back off. He is expanding again at his natural time. popped up there. And there's a turret already prepared nice. in case of those uh, Cloak Banshees returning. Yeah, that's pretty awesome, actually. It looks like Drooby and Cats are going to run around the side and may do a little bit of a counterattack. Uh, we'll find out, though. Drooby is going ahead and firing the Phoenix as much as he can. Oh, but there's now Phoenixes plus Void Rays. However, those units have to back up. Not often you see a ton of fungus going down time after time again. Zealous has the time to let you take care of that, and Katz is cleaning that up, but he has so many investors with so much energy. Not all that expensive for him to go ahead and do that. I kind of want to get Burrow right now. He can sneak those investors into all kinds of places. And have his roaches obviously be able to regenerate a lot of health. I think that's one thing that's missing from his uh, unit composition right now is that XM Burrow upgrade. He's going to lose this gold base and nothing to do about it except sort of endlessly trench views, but I don't think he's going to attempt that. Uh, just a waste of energy at this point. Uh, actually, no, he did just transfuse it once, twice. So he's at 250 health. Looks like he is going to try and save it instead. So here it comes a bunch of fungals and roaches actually from both sides clearing this up completely. So Cat's. Uh, did invest the energy and the time to keep that hatchery alive, but now it's only at 200 HP. It's obviously very open to attack later on. Yeah, and it looks like Druby is actually the farthest back in supply at this point, but Cats is so far ahead that they have equalized the supply between the two teams. Uh, but it does appear Substance has a pretty good economic advantage at the moment. They are way